today's face, we're going to be taking the Cover FX Illuminating Primer. This is great for adding an all over glow to your face to look at, make it look extra radiant. To control oil or help your makeup from not sliding around your face all day when it's hot out in the summer, I'm using the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. It has a smooth finish, though it's not oily, it makes your makeup last all day. This is definitely for those oily girls out there. Next, I'm taking my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Light. This is my Highline Concealer, so I wanted to try to reduce all the cake under my eyes that I normally do, so I'm just taking a damp beauty blender and blending that out before I even do my foundation so I don't have to put more products down there like I normally do. So I'm just blending this out as usual using patting motions until I am happy with how everything looks and how blended it is. It's important that your sponge is damp so it can pick up any excess oils. Next I'm taking the Josie Maron Vibrancy Foundation which is probably my all time favorite right now. It's so beautiful. It's just got the best coverage, the most radiant finish. I'm in the shade RG50. And I just love how this applies with the Beauty Blender. It's super full coverage, so super dewy. It looks like your skin is just so stunning. I make sure to blend this down my neck and take a little bit of the excess on my Beauty Blender and kind of dab it around my ears so everything just blends together super well. This doesn't oxidize on me and looks super fresh all day, though I am going to set it just because if I'm outside running around, it can feel a little hot because this foundation is so dewy. So I'm taking the cap on D translucent locket powder that just came out. This powder is a little controversial. Some people like it, some people don't. Though for me, when I bake with it, it's really good because it brightens where I need it to, but also sets where I want it to. I really like this better than the Laura Mercier, though everyone has different like skin types and preferences. So maybe just with this foundation, it works really well. But so far, I've really been loving it and I'm just going over that with a damp beauty blender pressing it into the skin so it really melts in there. I'm also going to be doing this around places where I know I crease throughout the day. My smile lines because I'm always smiling and they're always creasing together so just making sure I'm patting that excess powder in there. I'm not even taking any more on there just to smooth everything out. Next I'm taking the Tarte um, full coverage powder foundation in light neutral and I'm taking this with a buffing brush all over the skin to set it even more and give myself a super full coverage makeup look because this eye look is very intense. Now I'm going to be taking the Tarte BB Powder in Tan Honey. I'm going to use this to bronze my face today. I want a very bronzy almost orange glow today because that's really going to make our eyes pop and it's the look I'm going for. It's not for everyone. Not everyone's going to be into that but today I I'm really want that And then taking this fan brush and again and I'm just for. brushing all this powder all over my face. I love this brush because it gives me a lot of control. And with the same brush I'm going to be taking the Charlotte Tilbury Smoothing Skin Airbrush Face Powder in Light. Dusting off all that excess powder. I'm also kind of going to be kicking off the bake and making my contour and um, bronzer look a little more sharp not as messy and then I'm going in with another bronzer this is by Tom Ford in one of his summer collections just any bronzer that you have or you can just use one I'm going over the cheeks because again I want a really bronze almost orange glow to my skin today to really make everything pop and then I'm kicking off any of that excess bake under the eyes um, I felt like my skin was a little bit dry under there today just in general. I haven't been hydrating as well so I'm gonna go under my eyes with a damp beauty blender just to smooth everything out and right now I'm just making sure that my eyes are coated with primer and going over with some shadow so that when I go in to do my eye makeup everything looks really seamless. Right now on a tapered highlighting brush, I'm taking Barcelona Beach by Makeup Geek. This is an eyeshadow, though it's beautiful to contour with. I really liked how it worked on my face and my nose. My nose is super picky about contours, so if it works on there, then it's pretty good and it is an eyeshadow. Makeup Geek's products are very versatile and they have good ingredients, so I thought this would work perfect. And I didn't notice any kind of like breaking out or weird things throughout the day with this eyeshadow and I really liked how it looked. I'm also going to be taking it down my nose on a small flat shader brush and this is how I'm going to be contouring. Contouring your nose is definitely I feel like a 
um, must, even if it's very, very light when you're doing a really full face of makeup because it's just kind of like doing your brows. It really makes everything come together. Even if you don't want your nose to look slimmer, just to put some kind of like dimension on there, I think looks really beautiful. If you have a really slim nose, you could maybe just highlight it. Then I'm taking this under the lip um, just to make it look a little bit powdier. You want to just do a very light amount because if you go a little too crazy on this, it will look muddy and just weird under there. Um, again, like I said before, I'm taking that beauty blender under the eye, smooth everything out. And now on a fluffy crease brush, this is from Luxie. It's a big blending brush. I'm going to be taking this peach smoothie all over the eye and blending this out. I'm taking this from my crease um, to about halfway to the brow bone. I don't have a super prominent crease, so we're gonna be taking lots of steps to make sure that my crease is more defined and you can tell um, where my crease is on my eyelid. Um, you don't have to be super precise with this at all. As you can see, I'm kind of being messy, but when we go in with other shadows, we're gonna get more precise and precise. I'm now taking Creme Brulee, which is another Makeup Geek shadow on that same blending brush. I'm putting it in the same spots where we put Peach Smoothie. Again, this is going to add more definition to our eyes because I do not have a super prominent crease, so I want to give my eyes more definition. I am going to be slightly winging this shadow out so we don't want it to look super rounded because I want to give my eyes a more cat eye effect. And next, I'm taking on a small tapered Luxie brush, the Shadow Frappe from Makeup Geek. All these shadows are so amazing and so blendable, even if you have some of the most difficult eyes to work with. We're taking this from the outer corner of the crease to the center. I wanted to round out my eyes before we wing them out so it looks balanced. I am taking this on that same Luxie crease brush on the other eye to round it out as well. And then I am going to be winging this out. And this look will probably look like a disaster before because there's so many steps to make it blended and buffed out. But then you have to make sure it's pigmented and then we're going to be winging out a cut crease. So this is a look that you want to make sure you at least have if you're getting ready. Um, probably two hours to do your hair, your makeup, and get out the door because it definitely takes some time and some practice. Now I'm taking Coco Bear from Makeup Geek and I'm going to be drying up the shape of kind of how I want to wing out my eye. It's a little difficult to see at this angle, so I'm going to show you another one. And I am taking it on that same tapered blending brush from Luxie. Luxie brushes are my absolute favorite. And all these shadows are going to complement anyone because a lot of people look very good with warm shadows, but these especially look great on people if you have blue eyes because those colors really contrast and really make your eyes pop. As you can see on this angle, I'm drawing out kind of where I want to wing out my eye and have it be more angular. It's going to be softer once we finish the look, but right now I need to make sure that I'm building up the intensity while blending this out. So I always keep a paper towel near me so I can brush off the excess shadows on my brush and then go back in and blend them out so it doesn't look too muddy too fast. And I also have a variety of brushes sitting with me. I like to have different sizes of blending brushes because that helps not only to um, make the blending easier, but also will not get as muddy as fast. And again, this is very tedious. So we're going over it slowly and blending out again with clean brushes. And then if you notice that your eyeshadow got a little crazy on the side, um, because it will happen, I just use my finger to kind of brush that off. And then I am going to take a little bit of peach smoothie and kind of blend that out just to make it all very seamless. This is really going to help to make your eye look still look good and you do not have to start over if it does get a little crazy on the outer edges. I'm going back in with Coco Bear to deepen up even more and smoke it out on the lower lash line. I really like how this look looks smoky all the way around and that's kind of what we're doing. We're creating a smoky halo around the outside of the eye that kind of wraps around from the bottom lash line to the top and wings out. Just taking a clean brush right now and blending everything out before we go in with our lip liner brush. And this is from Sigma. It's a Sigma lip liner brush. And I'm going to be using this to apply my wing liner today and create a cut crease look for you. 
I chose to use a black shadow that you could use brown. Um, I wouldn't do anything like a liquid or gel liner just because shadow is so much easier to work with. I'm just taking very small amounts to create the wing, how far I want it and how thick and then I'm going in with the cut crease part of this look and right now we're just working on the shape and then we're going to go in and blend everything out but I am going to fill this in kind of a third and then kind of have it have like a triangle effect to it. I really like like that shape on the eye personally and then I'm going to be taking just a very very little amount of black shadow and blending that all out. I will also be going back in with like frappe and a little bit of cocoa bear and some of those shades that we used earlier to blend out the black even more. On a angled liner brush I'm going to be taking a vanilla shade and I'm going to be brightening up that center. It looked really really patchy on camera though once I take this blending brush it smooths it out a lot more. On this eye it just helps us see a different angle of it. Um, again you just want to start with the wing. I find that that's the easiest and then to connect it to your crease. Make sure you're connecting it where it kind of um, you have a crease when you close your eye um, because if not you can put it too far and it just looks very weird. Um, you are going to be connecting that crease to the rest of the liner so if you want your crease to be a little higher it is going to give you that effect. Again, because we are blending this out so much, I am going to go back in with the black shadow over the liner once we're done just to deepen it up. And if you do have any places where it looks patchy or not smooth as you like, just keep a clean paper towel by you so you can brush off your brushes and then just go in with a big fluffy brush and blend everything out. I find that this is the easiest step to make your eyeshadows look really nice and not too muddy. That's why I like to keep lots of brushes on hand with me and a clean paper towel again to dust them off. I'm doing the same kind of diamond step on the inner two-thirds of the eyes and I really like how this looks. It's a very different look than just doing like the whole eye with a light shadow and then again just blend everything out. Blending is definitely your friend when you're doing this. I'm taking this orange blush by Anastasia. It's actually one of her contour shades in La Orange. And I like how this looks because with all the other warm toads on the face, it looks um, just very bright and it really makes your cheeks pop. This is probably not an everyday blush, but if you are going for a statement look like this, it's going to look really pretty and in pictures it's really going to pop. I took the Huda Beauty Lashes in Scarlet and oh my gosh, I love these lashes. They're so beautiful. I'm taking this Dior highlighter on a Sigma natural hairbrush and I'm taking this from the cheekbone to the brow bone right above the brows and I'm putting those basically all over the high points of my face. This is such a beautiful color. It's kind of like champagne pop but it's a little bit lighter but still has that very pretty bright intensity. I always like to put it over the cupid's bow because I think it looks very very pretty and dainty and really lights up the whole face and I like to also put it over the nose just to make it look a little slimmer and if the rest of your face is glowing I feel like the center of your face should as well because it just looks a little bit more put together though that's just my personal preference um, and I like the natural um, hair brushes because they apply highlighter I feel like better than synthetic I'm also going in with two lip liners today. I'm using an Urban Decay one. This is actually from the Gwen Stefani collection in Ex-Girlfriend. But you can also just use any nude pinky brown. This one is beautiful because it doesn't pull too like warm or too cool on me. It's very neutral and basically my lips but darker. And I'm going to be going in with the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner in Pillow Talk. This is one of my absolute favorite. Every girl needs this lip liner and if you like something more nude or brown, try the one in Nude Iconic. This one though for me is so beautiful. I just cannot get enough of this lip liner. It's amazing. Now I'm going to take a liquid lipstick. This is Jeffree Star's Mannequin Liquid Lipsticks and his liquid lipsticks are so amazing. They are the best formula by far. They are not drying. Though I'm just obsessed with lip gloss. I feel like my lips just look nicer when I have lip gloss on. So I'm taking the Buxom White Russian Lip Gloss and applying this to my lips to complete the look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to try this out and it would be amazing for prom or any special event you have coming up.